Today on Fresno State Focus, a big hit to the wallet, how expensive it could get for entrance into Yosemite and other national parks. And find out how well you really know your Fresno State campus as we explore a hidden pond. Plus, we look at why the Fresno State men's tennis team is so diverse. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Matt Roby. And I'm Elizabeth Carrillo. Get ready to pay more to get around. Gas and car registration taxes are expected to almost double and the first hike hits next week. Come November 1st, there will be a 12 cent increase in the gasoline tax. Diesel fuel tax will go up by 36 cents. The price to register your car could double. Governor Jerry Brown says this extra money will bring in an estimated $52 billion to help Caltrans fix roads and bridges over the next decade. And these aren't the only prices going up. Because of overcrowding and roads falling apart, the entrance costs to national parks could go up to $70 in the next few months. Two hours north of Fresno State on Highway 41, lies the world-famous Yosemite National Park. Tourists from around the world flock here year-round to catch a glimpse of the winding rivers, flowing waterfalls, and panoramic views. It's like a family holiday, so we're just going to a few places in America and we want to come to the National Park and see what it's like. And although the views of the park are peaceful and serene, the traffic coming in tells a different story. Visitors will often wait up to 30 minutes at the front gate, and constant road construction means the drive into the valley can easily take another hour. Scott Gediman has been a ranger in Yosemite for over 21 years, meeting two U.S. presidents, and has recently seen a massive increase in guests. I've also seen parks uh, get busier. You know, parks are incredibly popular. Uh, pe parks like Yosemite have always been popular, but over the past five or six years, here in Yosemite and in parks across the country, the visitation has really exploded. The main problem is the number of cars on the road. When over 6,500 cars are in the park, which happens often during summer months, roads gridlock and parking lots fill, causing visitors to get frustrated. But people continue to show up and brush off the problem. No, I think that everywhere is like this. Last year, Yosemite Park had over 5 million visitors, most of whom driving in private automobiles. But what is the National Park Service doing to combat this overcrowding? To keep up with the cost of renovations and repairs, President Trump has announced that entrance costs to national parks could double in the next few months. And if visitation doesn't slow down, the National Park Service could be forced to place a restriction on the number of guests. To help cut down the traffic in Yosemite, you could let someone else drive for you and save some money. The Yarts bus goes to the park from Fresno State, and it only costs $20. Every 11 minutes, someone in this country dies of suicide. According to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, that's over 44,000 people a year. The Fresno community came together this past Saturday at Oso de Oro Lake Park to work on changing these heartbreaking numbers. They took part in the Out of the Darkness walk in remembrance of sol and solidarity for those affected. A significant part of the event is the Honor Beads ceremony where people choose beads to represent their personal connection to the cause. For Susan Frazier, these beads connect her to a time where she felt suicide was her only way out. I was um, sexually molested as a child from age 8 to 12, and it was something that I grew up not talking about and I felt this guilt and shame and as I grew older I think it was something that continued to haunt me. <laughs> For Frazier, finally speaking out about what happened to her was the first step in her healing process and she hopes this movement can do the same for those around her. The Out of the Darkness Walk raised nearly $11,000 and will be used to help improve mental health awareness in our community. The Marjorie Mason Center is a domestic violence safe haven that accounts for one of the largest shelters in California. Services provided for victims include housing and support, among many other things. Here in Fresno, the headquarters is making it a mission to lead the way to end the cycle of abuse. 
Here to talk with us about being an advocate for the center is intern Kerrigan Huerta. Thank you for being here. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. So can you just tell me a little bit more about what the center offers? Yeah, Marjorie Mason Center has been around since 1979. We provide counseling, safe housing, and legal options to victims of domestic violence. So we have counselors on hand, advocates on hand, and we even have a paralegal in office to help victims. And what are some of the extra efforts that you guys are doing to reach out? I am one of their outreach specialists I, um, on a volunteer basis. We really do need volunteers, especially students at Fresno State, because they do have a future with our center. We do resource fairs. We go to ever uh, events to do booths to allow the community to know that there are options for victims of domestic violence in Fresno County. And what would you say is the most rewarding part of volunteering there? Just seeing the help that I have, or the impact I have made on victims of domestic violence, it really does show in the way they react. And you can see a big difference from when they come into our center and we give them housing and counseling and then when they find permanent housing, permanent residence, and they are able to get themselves out of the domestic violence relationship, it's really rewarding seeing the change in them and their lives. Definitely. So any advice that you would give for someone watching the show that maybe has been in a domestic violent relationship or know someone in that? Well, one in four women are influenced by domestic violence and one in seven men are influenced. So it's more likely than not that even someone in this room has been influenced by domestic violence. Any advice I would say is just don't be afraid to speak up. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we provide services to victims of domestic violence, so there are options for them. I think that's something a lot of victims and survivors of domestic violence aren't aware of. So there are options. We have a website with a quick escape and a 24-hour hotline at the Marjorie Mason Center, so anyone who knows somebody or anyone who is in a relationship of domestic violence, there are options. And how would you tell someone to get involved if they were looking to volunteer? We do need volunteers, so they would have to go through a volunteer orientation and a background check just to make sure that you know they have a clear record to participate with our organization. But we love having um, people do outreach fairs with us. I, that's how I started at the Marjorie Mason Center seven months ago, is I started doing outreach uh, fairs for them. I help with in-office administration work, and then they can even be certified as an advocate if they do our 40-hour training. That's so awesome. I'm so glad that you're volunteering mm -hmm. and that you're passing on that information to students at Fresno State. Thank you so much for talking with us, Kerrigan. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. We've been talking with Kerrigan Huerta, Marjorie Mason Center Victims Advocate. Thank you for being here. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, we take a look into a closet that prepares students for that first big interview. And a little piece of the Ninja Warrior has come to Fresno, and it's a great way to work out. Plus, when are those fall temperatures going to hit? Brittany gives us a look at what to expect from weather. All that when we come back. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. This is our Fresno State, forming relationships and learning experiences that last a lifetime. Making friends who are like family, learning from professors who treat us like family, and earning a degree to make a better future for our family. Engaging our alumni generation by generation by generation. This is our Fresno State. Welcome to the family. Hey everybody, I am Brittany Sosa and we are gonna take a look at your weather forecast up and down the valley. Right now we are looking at one of Fresno State's famous fountains here in our center of Fresno State. Look at, look at such beautiful, look at that picture. It is just amazing. So now we're gonna take a look at our current weather. Current weather here up and down the valley. We have Stockton at 85, all the way across the map, all the way down to Porterville to 87. These are not normal temperatures for us to be heading into winter, but they cool down at nighttime. So we take a look at current temperatures at night. We have lows 50s all the way down the map. The coldest weather that we have right now is Shaver Lake. So if you guys want to escape that hot weather, I would take a trip to Shaver. 
We're going to take a look at our air quality right now. Across the map, uh, from Merced to Madera, we have good air quality. From Fresno to Tulare, we have moderate. So this is a perfect time if you guys want to take a jog or a run with your dogs or by yourself. It is perfect weather to do that. Right now, the air quality is good. I know that there, it could be pretty bad up and down California due to all the fires, but right now it's good, so take advantage. We're going to go ahead and take a look at our eight-day forecast. It is sunny across the map. If um, you guys are going out this weekend for Halloween, highs right now are in the 80s, but if we look lower down into the day, it's going to go into the 50s. So if you're going out this weekend for Halloween, make sure you take a jacket or something to cover up because it's going to be pretty cold. And if you are actually Tuesday, Tuesday is Halloween day. So Tuesday, if you guys are taking your children out trick-or-treating, I suggest maybe giving them a little jacket or something because it's going to get the lows at 47. I am Brittany Sosa for your eight-day forecast. This is what it's going to look like. Back to the desk. Each class we take here at Fresno State gets us closer to the goal, graduation and starting our career. The Career Development Center on campus helps students get there not only with resume workshops and networking, but also with a free suit. Eliza Navarro shows us how students can get suited up for their big move from college, student to professional. I think that every single person should come here whether they have a suit or not. Criminology major Tyler Verberg first heard about this place when a guest speaker came to his classroom. And she had introduced the, the clothing wardrobe and said that there was three items that we could pick throughout the whole entire semester. And I thought it was too good to be true and came here and still think it's too good to be true, honestly. So we just had a guy that came in today that had a presentation today and he was like, I'm so glad I came in because I have a presentation like right after this. The clothing closet first opened to students in April 2016. Super clean, organized, gently used items for men and women. Shoes, ties, purses, accessories and suits everything a professional would need in all sizes. Debbie Young came up with this idea of this place when a student of hers asked her a profound question. One day he came in and he said to me, Debbie, do I buy a shirt and tie for my interviewer or do I buy Christmas presents for my kids? She was about to buy him a shirt. She was so touched by his question, but then something big happened. Around the same time, a woman had called me whose husband was a prominent local dentist and he had passed away suddenly and she had, she still had clothing with tags and in tissue paper that were his, that were brand new. So she said, I really want to give this to some place where people are going to value the clothes and maybe use them in a professional way. This is that place. I know every single day somebody walks out with a tie and a shirt and a suit in their hand is the coolest thing ever. Almost two years later, since the closet opened, more than 1,700 students have benefited. This resource is one of the most outstanding and one of the most beneficial for any Fresno State uh, student. I think it's really important that they should come here. The only thing the clothing closet asks for in return is that students pay it forward when they're able to, donating clothes for the next generation of college students. Eliza Navarro, Fresno State Focus. Students are able to take three pieces of clothing and visit the clothing closet once a semester. You can find the clothing closet in the Thomas Frank building. Just swipe your ID and you're good to go. Halloween is right around the corner and there are many local events here in town for students to enjoy. The Maya Cinema is offering a lot of fun activities during the holiday season. Every Tuesday till the end of October, they are hosting a trick-or-treat festival where they show classic Halloween movies for only $5.50. Uh, we actually have, um, we're showing the movie Hocus Pocus on October 27th and 28th. On the 27th, it's at 7 p.m. On the 28th, it's at 11 a.m. The Disney classic hasn't been shown in a cinema theater in over 20 years. They are working close with Disney to raise money for local scholarships. All the proceeds made the night of the view will go straight to the scholarships. It looks like there's a new way to work out in Fresno, and it doesn't involve lifting weights or running on the treadmill. Fresno's own Len Olmos recently opened Adventure Sports Complex, and it's one of a kind. 
It is truly a different type of workout. You're going to use so many different types of muscles that you've never used before. I loved it because this was the first time that I was able to approach it and, and check it out and, and do it myself. It's just fun. It makes you feel like a kid. So whether it be clinging on the rock wall, dodging all the obstacles, or trying to balance yourself across the balance rope, there's fun for everyone. Just make sure you practice running up the small warp wall before you try the big warp wall that is 14 feet high. Coming up in sports, the football team just keeps winning. They don't show any sign of slowing down this weekend against the running Rebels. And the women's soccer team needs to win their last game. We take an in-depth look at Angela Weiner and head coach Brian Zawaska to see what they need to do to punch their ticket to the postseason. Stay tuned for Sports with Vanessa Romo. I got the ball down spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that ball down spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head to say. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, down in my toes, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, hey. down in my toes to stay. I got that bulldog spirit up in my head, deep in my heart, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit all over me, all over me to stay. I got that bulldog spirit deep in my heart. Welcome back. I'm Vanessa Roma with your sports report. The dogs mauled the Aztecs this Saturday, 27 to 3. The football team is now 4-0, a first since 2013. Leading the pound, running back Josh Hokett dominated the field with three rushing touchdowns, a career high for the sophomore. Quarterback Marcus McMarion went 10 for 16 in the air, going for over 170 yards. Jordan Mims down at the one. The defense also putting in work. The Dogs forced its 14th turnover of the season as well as its seventh fumble of 2017. Senior Nathan Madsen entering the game with four tackles and leaving with eight that night. He also recorded his first sack of the season. In the end, Fresno State brings back the battle for the oil can trophy gone since 2014. You can catch the dogs back in action this Saturday against the UNLV Rebels. The men's basketball team is also back on the court today, taking on St. Mary's in a special NorCal fire relief exhibition. I had the chance to watch one of the team's practices. Cameras off. Head, head coach Ronnie Terry wants to surprise the red wave. But of course, I got a sneak peek on what to expect from the dogs this season. I'm excited about this group. This group is going to be a a group that's going to get better as the season goes along. They're going to, they're going to, you know, we have some experience. You know, we got a group that can play fast. Um, you know, we can play small. We can play big. We're athletic. Um, you know, we have a chance or the makings of, of being a really good defensive team when we want to. Joining the dogs this year, senior guard Ray Bowles Jr. Bowles playing with the University of the Pacific for three years is now rated as the 33rd best transfer scorer in the country by SportsIllustrated.com. One of his reasons for coming to Fresno, we win. I know Fresno has always been a, a good program that wins a lot of games and goes plays in the postseason. And that's one of the main things that I wanted to do was play in the postseason. And uh, I've, I've yet to do that, but uh, I, I feel that now that I'm here that I will be able to do that this year. The dogs are on the road today, but we'll be back home to take on the Pacific Union College at the Same Art Center this Monday at 7. The women's soccer team was back in action this weekend, defeating Colorado College 3-1. Before taking the field on Sunday, the dogs celebrated nine players. Cheering, reflecting, and taking pictures with their family and friends, these nine seniors were ready to go out with a win for their last collegiate home game. With a cross from the outside by senior forward Myra Delegadillo, Carly Bracken, another senior, was able to find the back of the net. But it was sophomore Julia Glaser who secured the win for the Dogs, scoring two goals. Glaser now ties the record for most goals in a season. She has one more chance to beat that record at this coming game Friday against number one San Jose State. The soccer team also has one more chance to see the Mountain West Tournament. 
Speaking with senior Angela Weiner and head coach Brian Zwaska at yesterday's practice, the team knows what they need to do to punch their ticket to the postseason. To make it to postseason, I mean, I'm a player that likes to focus on the team, and I think our team should focus on us. Uh, we need a win or tie this upcoming game, and then based on some results of other games too, we can still make it to the tournament if we don't get the results in our game. But for now, I'm um, having my team focus on us and getting our results ourselves. The dogs sit at fifth place in the Mountain West Conference, but only six teams can make postseason cuts. The only thing standing in their way, the regular season champions. We know we're going in to face the top team. And, uh, you know, the, the idea for us, though, is not to do anything differently, uh, to just to make sure that we do what we do well as best as we can. And, and uh, I think we'll be okay. The dogs will be on the road to meet their fate this Friday against San Jose State. A sport that is not in season at the moment, the women's softball team. The team just got done playing their last game of the fall against Fresno City last night and is now off for the season. Here to talk to us today about her plans for this year, senior shortstop Katie Castellone. Thank you for being here today. Of course, thank you for having me. So you guys had your fr um, last game at Fresno City College. How did that go for you guys? Um, it was pretty good. Being our last game, it was really cool to see like all the hard work we've put into the fall kind of come together. And um, the way we ended, I believe, gives us confidence going into February when our season actually starts. So now that you guys are done with fall ball, what are you going to do with that extra time? Um, well, now that fall ball is done, we still practice all the way up until like the first couple weeks of December. And then we kind of die down now. So we'll, we have one more week of team practice. And then after that, we go back to what we call individual. So it's like two or three players at a time working with the coaches. So we just try to keep what we've worked all fall and try and take that into us going into season. Okay, and I understand for two years you have been named the academic All Mountain West, you know, how do you balance that school and sport? Uh, yeah, it's really hard actually, but um, we have a lot of help in uh, the sports side with academics, with tutors and stuff, and it's just time management. It's knowing what's important and like knowing that I am here to graduate first, so I always have to keep that in mind and make sure I do get all my schoolwork done. And so you are a senior, so what are you hoping for this last season? Uh, I'm just hoping to enjoy this year. Of course, our goal as a team is to win Mountain West, and I'd love to go out on top with that and make it back to postseason. But it's really just enjoying all these last moments I have with my team. And what are your plans after college? Yikes. Um, well, I'm a crim major, so I'm hoping to go somewhere in law enforcement. I haven't really narrowed it down yet, but hopefully along the, that road. And why crim? What's your um, well, my dad was also in law enforcement and like growing up seeing him in that like I love that and I want to be able to give back to my community away and like keep everyone around us safe. So that's my goal. Mm -hmm. And when did you start playing softball? Um, I started when I was four years old. So my mom and dad put me into it. They both played. My mom played softball. My dad played baseball. So it's kind of was just in the family. Yeah. yeah. And did you always want to play college ball? Um, that was the goal. I mean, I've been playing since I was four. I did the whole travel ball thing. My parents put a lot of money into it. And so being able to like get a scholarship was kind of able to pay them back in a way for all their money they put into it. And like seeing all my hard work pay off and like being able to receive a scholarship, like that was always my goal was to make it. So yeah. Yeah, and what are you looking forward to this being your last season? Um, it's a little scary. It's sad it's come to an end. I mean, four years, it flies by, but I'm just looking forward. We have a pretty new team so being able to make memories with new people and kind of just leave our mark as seniors and like hopefully being able to say we ended it being conference champs that's what I'm looking forward to. Well good luck to you and your team. Thank you. We have been talking with senior shortstop Katie Castellon. The Fresno State men's tennis team is unlike many of the other sports at Fresno State. Most teams have players from up and down California with a few from other states. While the men's tennis team has just one player from California, where does everyone else come from? They come from all over the globe, spanning seven different countries. And now as Corey Stevens shows us, they all get to call this city of Fresno home. Moving to a completely different country that is thousands of miles away can be difficult, making it feel like you're already down a few sets when you arrive, especially if it is a place you've never been to and you don't know anyone. But when your whole team is in the same boat, it's a lot easier. On campus, there's so many Americans that it is nice to have like this little European part in, in, in the team. These players come from all over. It's like a little United Nations here. But when they're on the court, they all represent one flag, Fresno State. 
Fresno State's men's tennis team has players from all over the world, whether it be Czech Republic, Turkey, or even Switzerland. But the one thing that brings them together here at Fresno State, their love for the game of tennis. It can be tough moving across the world for something you love, but Jim Urchurk says he's made the right decision in coming here to Fresno State. I think when I'm here, my tennis is really improving very well. And yeah, I'm just trying to do what court says to me. And I'm just trying to improve every day. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Following through with what you really love takes dedication, desire, and a little bit of that go-getter mentality to prove the doubters wrong. And Coach Shields believes that Fresno State is the right program for these students to do that. Well, we got a great uh, culture of success here. You know, we have uh, our, our culture is about as healthy as any program in the country. Um, it's great weather for competing in practice every day. And, our guys love it, they get better, and so I mean, I, I think it's a really healthy environment right now. And our guys love it, we love it, we love coaching them, so it's, um, yeah, it's a special place. You can catch the undefeated football team host the UNLV Rebels this Saturday at 7, as well as the men's first basketball game Monday. That's a look at sports. Back to you, Matt and Elizabeth. How well do you know the Fresno State campus? Did you know there's a secret pond on campus? Yeah, that's right. It's a hideaway that no one seems to know about. Fresno State is a busy place. Whether you're making your way to class, to get something to eat, or to the library, the fast pace doesn't seem to have a slowing point. But there is a place few people know about that is tucked away on campus where you can go to escape. What's behind me are beautiful plants trees, flowers, bamboo even. Want to see the pond? Follow me. Once up the wooden steps, there's a space around the pond where you can take a walk and it leads out to a small dock overlooking the water. If you are looking to enjoy this picturesque area, you may have some company looking for a peaceful lunch and a quiet thinking spot. A lot of the biology folks, they know all about it, you know, coming out here and doing labs and things. Um, but yes, I've had some students wander back here, you know, and come have lunch every now and then. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool area. It's a cool place to work. The area technically known as a nature sanctuary is a working classroom for biology students, helping them learn about the different plants surrounding the pond. Once you do the work and get here and find it, and it's not easy, you see that it's beautiful. It's very tranquil, it's very peaceful, it's a beautiful setting, and it just kind of takes your mind off the stresses. The next time you're feeling like everything is non-stop and you just want to take a moment, go on that mini adventure and say hello to Fresno State's Secret Pond. Okay, isn't the pond beautiful? Well, you got to show me where that is. Somebody needs to tell us. Okay, it wouldn't be a secret if I told you guys, but I'll give you a clue. It's near the Science 2 building. And I encourage everyone, including you guys, to learn more about the campus trying to find it. <laughs> hey, for all you baseball fans out there, are you planning to fork out $800 for a ticket at Dodger Stadium? You could sit in a great stadium and watch the game for free. The Fresno Grizzlies are hosting a watch party that is free for every game of the series. Who are you guys rooting for? Dodgers. The Astros. Oh, for Astros sure. all yeah. the no way. No comments. No comments for me. <laughs> go team. Oh, okay, go team. Go dogs. <laughs> yes, go dogs. Well, next week on Fresno State Focus, we'll take a look into what life is like behind the microphone of a local radio personality. Plus, what it takes for Fresno State to make wine from crushing grapes to getting it to the customer. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.